Okay, I want to give a quick power up on the AmSafe Soars seatbelts, SDC. Um, I couldn't find any other videos like this, and I would have liked to have had one before I dove in head first. Um, basically, they're STC'd for pretty well any airplane. There's, they're not specific, which I don't really understand how they get away with that, other than the FAA is a little lenient towards safety items. Anything else, you'd have to be very specific, even uh, like Garmin GPS's, they've got an STC for every airplane they go in. But these, you can just could put it in anything. Um, this is a 1967 Cherokee. It didn't have the shoulder harnesses either. Um, those rails do come with the kit, but installing them is uh, separate. I went with the Alpha Aviation STC to install those, then use the M Safe reels. Here's the Revix for the bracket that I had to install there. And then, of course, you got the airbag seat belts. And what I really wanted to see before I did this is where other people were putting the inflators, which I got mine there right on the floor. And, uh, the STC is not specific at all as to where they go, nor is it for where the EMA, which is basically the crash sensor. That's what tells the inflators to inflate. Um, it has to be mounted to a rigid surface. There's mine there. I had to make a bracket for it right up to the firewall. And uh, I'm not going to pull the cowling off, but there's a stiffener that goes across the firewall on the other side and it's bolted right through that. So that's plenty rigid. I uh, can't remember exactly what the requirements are, but uh, that more or less just can't move. I think it's something like 0 0.05 of an inch with 100 pounds on it. And that's, that's all it's allowed to move. So. First I thought about sticking it on the floor, but uh, it would be an easy place to kick it. In between there, you got your cables, and the, uh, the cables in between the inflator and that sensor are absolutely just long enough, and you're not allowed to extend them. So it, it took me a while to figure that out. Um, my only real complaint is about uh, finding somewhere to do it. Uh, I ended up doing it myself, thankfully I am safe. Lex regular AMPs do it. Of course, there's a 337 and needs to be done as well. But uh, on their website, I was trying to find someone to do it before I decided to do it. And I called two or three people. I think none of them would do it. And if I remember correctly, one of the people didn't even know what I was talking about, let alone even had any airplanes. So I'm not sure where they get their dealer list from, but hopefully they've worked on that since... I started making phone calls back in March. This is uh, November now. I just finished this install a week or two ago because I was trying to figure out where I wanted to put everything. Just had some other things going on. Um, like I said, I don't know what someone who does this all the time would charge, but if I was going to do it again, I'd probably have to charge some about 20, at least 20 hours to do it by the time I made the brackets and everything that's and that's knowing where i was going to put it on this plane if i had to do another plane that that might not work maybe there's no room in the firewall or nowhere on the floor to mount it like uh for instance say cessna cardinal that wouldn't be a good place to put the inflators so i'm not sure where i would put them but uh yeah doing it over again probably about 20 some hours and i don't know what the going rate for an amp is because i do just my own work i don't do anything for anyone else but uh i think it's somewhere around 80 some dollars an hour so you're looking at a uh, good bit of money on top of the 2600 that you pay for the kit, but it's kind of how anything goes with aviation, I think. Um, overall, I'll do it again. Uh, hopefully, it's the most expensive thing I never use.